CBC. Home of the Calgary Stampede. The greatest outdoor show on earth. Saddle up. I'm into milk chocolate. Simple ingredients you can actually pronounce. Perfectly balanced. What's the word? Harmony. Hershey's simple ingredients create a delicious harmony of taste. New Hershey's milk chocolate. Simply delicious. It's embarrassing to admit. I hadn't slept next to my wife in almost three years. I couldn't get up the stairs. Well, not anymore. Now that we have an Acorn stair lift. Acorn can install a stair lift on almost any stairs. Straight, L-shaped, multiple landings, outdoors, and curved stairs. Call Acorn stair lifts right now to get a completely free consultation. There's no obligation, and with Acorn stair lifts fast installation. You could have an Acorn stair lift in your home in as little as 24 hours. If you're one of those people who struggles on the stairs or who can't use your stairs anymore, call Acorn stair lifts right now. Call Acorn right now and get a free, no obligation consultation. See how easy and affordable it is getting an Acorn stair lift in your house. And with Acorn stair lifts fast installation, you can have an Acorn stair lift in as little as 24 hours. Sophie is crazy for any canned food that's flaked. Flaked tuna, turkey, chicken. What I wasn't crazy about was that her big name cat food had wheat gluten. So I switched her to blue. Gabby will devour fish, only the dry kibble. But when I saw the first ingredient in her big name food was chicken byproduct meal, not fish, I felt like I didn't want to put her bowl down anymore. Maddie loves all kinds of delectable sauces and gravies. But why would her big name gourmet food have corn gluten meal? Blue doesn't. All cat parents want their little girls to love their food. But what if you don't love the ingredients in them? That's why cat lovers are turning to Blue Buffalo, because it has the natural ingredients you want combined with the delicious taste she wants. And real meat is always first. I went to the Blue Buffalo website and found the True Blue test. I compared my old brand to Blue. I couldn't believe the great stuff in Blue that's not in my cat's food. Maddie is one happy little girl with Blue. Her mom is even happier. Compare the ingredients in your cat's food to Blue at CompareBlueFood.com. Discover a whole new world in a whole new way. At last, Aladdin, Disney's new musical, debuts this November at the Ed Mervish Theater for nine weeks only. Tickets are on sale now at Mervish.com. This is CBC News Toronto. I'm Dwight Drummond. I'm Anne-Marie Medawake. Here are your top stories at 5.30. The best practice when it comes to a transitory record or a duplicate record was read and delete. Dalton McGinty's former chief of staff was in the hot seat today as he testified at the inquiry into the gas plant scandal. Chris Morley insisted he deleted documents for reasons listed in the Ontario Public Service rule book. Being mayor of Montreal is not a task that one can do while defending themselves. Montreal's mayor Michael Applebaum has resigned. It comes a day after he was arrested and charged with fraud, conspiracy and corruption. It's really exciting. Toronto's world-renowned cancer researcher, Dr. Mactac, unveiled a new drug today that could be a breakthrough in treating several types of cancer. But first, members of the Toronto Somali community are speaking out today, claiming police brutality in the Project Traveler raids from last Thursday. Stephen D'Souza went to the Dixon Road apartments to hear their concerns. Saida Hersey clutches her 96-year-old mother, Fadimo, who she says was roughed up during last week's police raids. To translate quite literally, she said, soldier came in and tried to handcuff me and my, my body convulsed and then he put me back on the bed. I put here. I Hersey put says here. she was in another room, forced to the ground, face down, handcuffed with a sweater thrown over her face. And when she asked for water... He said, you died now. I don't care. Police were at the apartment on Dixon Road targeting her son, Sayedin Abdi. He was arrested and is accused of being a member of the Dixon Bloods gang. He's also facing more than a dozen weapons charges. Today, the Somali community alleged more cases of police brutality, saying they were unfairly targeted during the raids. Many Somali community members felt victimized, traumatized. They blame Mayor Rob Ford. The raided buildings have been linked to the scandal surrounding a video of the mayor allegedly smoking from a crack pipe. 
If you want to go after Rob Ford, go after him. But don't go after Somali mothers. Don't go after Somali seniors. Don't go after Somali children. Toronto police say the raids had nothing to do with Rob Ford. We planned this operation a year ago, and, and people must understand the enormous amount of, of planning and effort that goes into it. As for the treatment of 96-year-old Fadim Hersi, Mark Pugash says she was treated in hospital and released uninjured. He says the suspects targeted in the raids put their own families at risk. There are people who seem to think that if thugs move in with their grandparents that they somehow have sanctuary. The community says it's not that simple. They've requested a meeting with Chief Bill Blair and that formal complaints are in the works. Stephen D'Souza, CBC News, Toronto. Toronto police have identified the city's latest murder victim, 27-year-old Byron Lemaire's. Lanares, rather, was shot and killed on Sunday. It happened in a ninth-floor apartment near Young and Shepherd just before 3 a.m. Police are still looking for the person who called 911. Anyone with information is asked to contact the homicide squad. Hundreds gathered at Toronto Police College this afternoon to remember the pilots and paramedics that were killed in an air ambulance crash last month. We grieve with you and that we all feel the void left by these four great men. Don Filiter, Jacques Dupuis, Dustin God. Dejeuner and Chris Snowball died when their orange helicopter crashed shortly after takeoff near Moosonee. Today their helmets were placed in front of their portraits in tribute. The Transportation Safety Board has not yet determined the cause of the crash. Is Ontario's legal drinking age too low? The Centre for Addiction and Mental Health thinks, thinks so, rather. It says alcohol consumption costs the province billions of dollars every year and is raising the legal age, they say, is one way to fix that. Genevieve Tomney joins us live now. And Genevieve, what age are we talking about here? Well, that would be 21, Dwight, the same as the legal drinking age in the United States, which is, of course, two years older than the legal drinking age here in Ontario of 19. It's just one of the recommendations coming from CAMH to the province trying to encourage them to change their alcohol policies in an effort to try and cut down on the tragedy, the harm, and yes, even the cost to society uh, of alcohol. And raising the legal age, of course, is certainly something that gets people talking. One of the big questions about raising it by just two years to 21 is what exactly would that do? I asked one of the studies lead researchers that question. Here's what he had to say. It does raise the average age when people start to drink. So if the age is 21, they will tend to drink at a higher age, you know, even though they drink before 21. There's lots of evidence from the United States, lot, piles of evidence indicating that by raising the drinking age to 21, well, as they did, they reduced crashes from alcohol, drinking and driving. There are, of course, a number of other recommendations on this list. Some of them are interesting, including raising alcohol prices along with the cost of inflation, restricting the hours that LCBOs can actually sell alcohol, and cracking down on alcohol advertising, especially when it comes to sales and prices. But, of course, the big one that's got people talking tonight is that idea of raising the legal age from 19 to 21. And 19-year-olds uh, sure have a lot to say about it. I'll have their reaction coming up at 6 o'clock. Reporting live downtown. I'm Genevieve Tomney. Interested to hear that. Thanks, Genevieve. Okay. Well, smokers who have tried to quit and failed now have another option, the battery-operated e-cigarette. But the kind that most people want, Canadians can't get. Kim Brunhuber with why the nicotine version is being kept out of our country. That stuff coming out of Mary Ewing's nose, Muppet's blood. You're smoking Muppet's blood? Yeah. <laughs> They're not smoking in a restaurant. That would be illegal. What do you call that? Uh, vaping. So you're vaping? Yep. And can you blow some uh, this way? Yep. So it smells uh, very fruity. And then you have the top chamber here. This is an electronic or e-cigarette. No tobacco, no smoke, just nicotine. You've been smoking for 50 years. 50 years. And now you've stopped. Stopped. Analysts say electronic or e-cigarettes will become a $2 billion industry worldwide by the end of the year, with some predicting sales will outpace conventional cigarettes within 5 to 10 years. Your order for pickup. 
At this brand new store, they say sales have been almost doubling every month, but they can only sell cartridges with flavored liquid. The ones most customers want, the ones with nicotine, they can't sell because while they're legal in the U.S., they're not allowed in Canada. These vapors have to go online or underground, literally in this case, to flea markets like this one. Health Canada says e-cigarettes may pose health risks and have not been fully evaluated for safety. There have been a few known problems, including at least one case of an e-cigarette exploding in someone's mouth. So this is the known entity which is harmful. This is the unknown entity that may or may not be harmful. So this addictions expert feels the risk of e-cigarettes are dwarfed by the risk posed by conventional cigarettes which kill close to 40,000 Canadians a year. So if you take the nicotine out of the tobacco and only give people nicotine, the potential harm is likely to be very, very small. In this case, say these former smokers, better the devil you don't know than the devil you do. Kim Brunhuber, CBC News, Toronto. If you need a sign that summer's near, blue flags were raised at Toronto beaches today. Now, they're supposed to mark some of the cleanest sand and water in the world. So just how clean are they? Nali Kalata finds out. With the warm weather and sun shining, Noelle Gervais came to Toronto's Woodbine Beach with her two small children. It's one of the only places where you can come in the city and, and there's actually fresh air. 